excited today to talk to TV personality, entrepreneur, uh, mother. Am I missing any other title? Oh, I have a lot of monikers, honey. <laughs> you Writer, director, producer. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of titles. Okay. But reader I'll, take of all whatever, I'll take whatever you give me, though. And so I'm super excited to talk to you. I feel like this is a really good season. Um, it's very entertaining. There's always this big discussion before the season starts about can the show survive if such and such is gone. So I remember, you know, when Nene left, it was like, can the show survive when Nene's gone? When you were gone for a season, is it going to be the same without Kenya? And then this current season, you guys were missing, Nene, uh, you're missing Portia mm-hmm. and Cynthia. Um, is there any concern with the cast that's returning? Is there ever a concern like, are we going to be able to pull this off without, you know, whoever that's not going to be here this next season? Is there ever any discussion internally about that? No, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, listen, for me, I think I, you can make the magic. You don't need certain personalities to make the magic. I mean, your life should be interesting enough and the ensemble should work as a team. And if you pull your weight, then everyone else should pull their weight and then you'll be fine. Um, I mean, I feel like there are girls that I would love, you know, to see and um, to come and play with us sometimes. But our show really is so good this season. Honestly, it's one of the best seasons that that I've ever been a part of. So I'm really proud of it. Okay. As someone that's been on the show for a while, um, how concerned are you and other veterans of the show about ratings? Do you guys care at all or do you guys pay attention? You know, we don't really we we don't really pay attention and what the audience like we're the only only audience. Um we have the only audience that really pays attention to our ratings ratings instead of just watching the show, which is very bizarre. <laughs> like they think that they're producers, which is so funny because they're so invested and we love that our fan base is so strong and so invested. However, what they don't see is across the board ratings are going down because people are watching it digitally instead, like on their devices and downloading them. Um, And so our numbers for our like plus threes and our plus sevens are through the roof. So they're in the millions, whereas you guys don't get you're not privy to those numbers. Um, You know, so it's, it's interesting. Our ratings are fine. It's just the live ratings across all TV are down. Okay. Um, I feel like every time I talk to any cast member, like in the middle of the season or before the season, you all are always like, this is the best season yet. Like you you guys, are, that's pretty on brand for what everyone says. What do you think makes this season different? It's just fresh, you know, fresh faces. I think that we have really great producers this season. Uh, They didn't let things slide. Like if there was an issue that anyone was having with someone, they really made us address it. So that's why you see things being um, addressed head on because the producers are really just doing their job. And I think that that's something that we really need every season and for girls to come and and really show their lives. Okay. And I think if you have those two elements, I think you can have in a great cast, of course, you'll have a great show. Okay. How would you grade this season thus far? Ooh, thus far, maybe like an A minus. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you feel like you're being portrayed accurately? I think so. I mean, you know, this is one of the seasons where I was just like, you know what, guys, I just can't do it anymore. I have to, I'm, I'm in a different place. I'm so happy. I'm so carefree. And I'm really just protecting that space. Okay. And, um, and I'm just interacting with the ladies in a different way. Like I'm not, I, I've always been the type of like no BS kind of person, but I think in this season, I'm more articulate in how I describe why things are triggers or why I behave a certain way. And um, I think it's just like, you know, the girls are, are um, enjoying me in this new space that I'm in a little bit more too. Okay. I, um, that the fact that you mentioned, like you articulate more what your issues are. I do. It comes to mind this past recent past episode, or I think it was the episode before last when you told Marlo, like, Hey, this is what's bothering me. And you may have done that before, but I just no. I noticed it. Okay. You haven't. Okay. Yeah. I noticed also it. Without anger, without angst, without, you know, 
anything that was, um, you know, I, I didn't want to speak angrily, you know, at someone. I wanted to just speak from my heart and be very sincere and to just hopefully make someone understand why I'm in the place that I'm in with them. Okay. All right. So we see some new faces this season. We have Magnetta. We have... Um... I love Magnetta, by the way. I love... That's, that's a... She's just such a good spirit, a good personality. She's just such a girl's girl. Um... I just really like her as a friend. Like I would ha- actually, I do hang out with Magnetta, um, aside from the show. So I just love having her be there. She's just a very positive person. Okay. I was going to ask you how you thought she was doing this season. May I say, I would like to, I, this far, I haven't really got to see or hear much of, but I, I was thinking in my mind when I was watching the show, you know, when you interject yourself into situations, you get called messy, but we also get to see and hear more from you. So I'm not I have to speak up. I think I think you'll see more of Magnetta in in the upcoming episodes. I think she goes on the group trip with us. We hang out more. We hang out more. And I think you'll see a little bit more of her getting into it because I think that's the thing. I think nice girls just sit back and they kind of watch and observe, but they may not speak up in your real life. But you're on a TV show, so you have to assert yourself and you have to um, give your opinion. Yeah, but it's got to be difficult to do that with cameras and then strong personalities. And, you know, like it's got to be, I'm sure it's got to be a challenge to kind of, you know, wiggle yourself into a a conversation. I think it was a bit challenging for her. Like it's something that comes up and she's going to kill me for this. And I'm like, girl, I'm like, girl. (laughs) You know what? She's done reality TV before. Yes, but she's not an aggressive person. Okay. she, in certain situations, it just seems like she just lets people kind of, um, you know, step all over her a little bit to the point where, you know, we were laughing later and Magnetta goes, you know, I'm not a killer, but don't push me. Like, that's who she is. Right. But that's not who she is on Real Housewives. Like, she's just such a sweet person right. that you just can't really take her being um, any other way, you know? Right. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Okay, so we have Magnetta. We had Saint Sonia. Son- Son- I had a trouble in the beginning trying to figure out if it's Sonia or or Sanya. And I think depending on where you are, they pronounce it differently. Okay, so how does she pronounce it? Both ways. Like Sonia is probably the most you know specific that she gets with it, but okay, so it's, it's Sanya. I don't know. Okay, so for this conversation, I'll say Sonia. <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm, I don't. It, I, I don't know. Okay, and this right. is no shade to her, but I'm like trying to, you know. I, I was the same way, and no shade intended for sure. Like I was like, uh, which one is it? Like I struggle. Yes. Okay. So, how do you think Sonia is fitting and moving along with the the cast thus far? You know, initially I was really rooting for for Sonia. Um, I think she's a nice girl. I think you know, even when this. Um, this season is said and done. I think she's a nice girl. However, I do think she gets caught up in wanting to play both sides of a coin. And she's a little bit, you know, wishy-washy when it comes to that, which I called her out on the last episode, which is some things that I've observed about her. Uh You can't, like, you can still be friends with someone and, and side with someone else. Or you can be quiet. So you have a choice. Either you side on whatever side you're going to be on, but you can't keep going back and forth because then it just makes no sense. Okay. And you think that she, in terms of going back and forth, you mean the fact that you had a, a private moment, not a private moment, but you had a moment with her and then she went back and told Marlo? Is that what you're referring to? That No, that's not, that's not the only reason. I think particularly is when I called her out about how she initially had all of this anger and all of this energy for Drew when Drew was getting into it with Sheree and other people. But yet she sees Marlo, you know, pretty much drag me and candy for the first five episodes and watched it happen and said nothing. So to me, that's, that's like flip flop behavior. You can't play both sides of the, of the field. You just can't do it. Not successfully anyway. Okay. Um, and then we also have some appearances from Fatum, Fatum, Fatum. Fatum, yes, Fatum. <laughs> okay, Fatum. How do you think Fatum? How do you think Fatum was getting along? And and you know, do you think she was a good fit or is a good fit? 
You know what? It's interesting because in the real life, I live for Fatum. Like she is funny. She's funny. She's silly. Um, she is, uh, you know, offbeat. She has a different energy. And I like Fatum. However, there are moments when we're with a group that I think Fatum possibly might indulge a little bit in, in you know, in the alcohol. In the <laughs> Yeah, in the libations, and then she kind of goes a little bit off, and you know, I I, I don't know. Um, I think if there's a limit to when she's being crazy, then I think she would be a great fit. Um, but there's got to be a limit. You can't be, you know, like they said in the movie, uh, you can't go full crazy. You gotta be, you know, you gotta be like, you know, quarter crazy. Yeah. <laughs> It's like it's just a pinky toe, not the whole foot. Right, not the whole foot. <laughs> you think she, some of us, when we drink, we get a little, you think it's, it's, we get a little, you think, not we, you think she gets a little bit more vocal when she has a little cocktail? I think, I think she gets a little more aggressive. Absolutely. Yeah, she gets more aggressive. Okay, gotcha. Um, whose side are you on in terms of the Sonya, Sonya's issue with Drew? I'm oh, taking Drew, Drew, 100%. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's, it just wasn't making sense. It doesn't make sense to anyone. No one can figure it out. And it just seems like she keeps bringing up issues, but she's not able to figure out what the issues are and tell us what the issues are. You know, so for me, I, because I don't understand it um, and hearing her in person and then even watching the edit, it just, it's just not making sense. So it kind of comes across as she's just trying to find a reason to, um, to have an issue with Drew. Okay. Um, whose side are you on in terms of Fatum and Drew having their situation spat? Oh God, you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> okay. So I think from my perspective, initially I was on um, Fatum's side only because when the reason that they have fallen out to begin with is because Fatum said something that the assistant said to Sheree and it was not complimentary to her husband. Okay. So, and it was very offensive. I would be offensive as offended as a wife. If someone says something like that about my husband, which I know not to be, you know, true. Okay. So I think initially Drew um, got really upset because she thought Fatum said it directly Right. And I was like, no, Fatum didn't say it directly. Fatum was saying what the assistant said, Drew. So that's why I was like, oh, I'm kind of like, you know, on, on uh, Fatum's side. She was just a messenger. She wasn't the person who made it up. Okay. But as time has gone on and they're just not able to resolve their differences, it just seems like Fatum just kept adding fuel to the fire, which is making the um, issue between them bigger. So now I would have to say, okay, Fatum, that's enough. You know, you need to calm down. It's not going to be resolved that way. Um, this is abort mission, abort mission, you know? <laughs> so now I'm like, I withdrew on it. Okay. Um, do you think there's anyone on this season that isn't necessarily carrying their weight? Oh, no, I, I can't say that. I don't think so. I think some people are doing the most and producing themselves, but I don't think that there's anyone that's not necessarily carrying their, their weight. Okay. When you say someone is producing them, themselves, what does that mean? I'm a regular viewer, so. Um, when, when I use the word producing themselves, mean, meaning acting, you're, you're pretending, you're, you're making up scenarios for the purpose of being on, you know, interesting on TV and that's producing yourself and being fake and being phony. Okay. And um, unfortunately, I definitely see at least, you know, one person doing that consistently. And I think everyone has called her out on it online, social media. You know, the one thing about our fans, they don't miss a beat. They can see everything that's happening. They see the crocodile tears. They see um, scenarios put forth just for a storyline. I mean, our viewers are really, really smart. Our fans are the smartest in TV. Okay. Who are you referring to? Um, I, I think we are all know who I'm referring to. Okay. All right. What type of cast member would you like to see on the show? You know what? I would love to see like a Lizzo type. Like, I want somebody who's that girl who's everyone's friend. She's fun. She's like the funniest person in the room keeps you laughing 
but then has this amazing family and sense of style, confidence. I want to see a Lizzo, you know? I, I just want someone genuine, funny, and has this really interesting life. Okay. Okay. That's real. That's a very specific type of person, too. It is, it is a very, I'm very specific, girl. I'm very specific. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to discuss uh, the fact that this season, and in the past, too, you seem to be having some issues with Marlo. Um, first of all, how did you feel about her getting a peach? You know, I think that goes without saying, I think in the past, there have only been one or two of us that, um, championed for her in the past and said that she deserved a peach. Um, so I, I don't even know why I'm even getting that question. Okay. Got it. (laughs) Um, you know, I was one of the only ones that stood up for her and said, you know, give Marlo a peach. So uh, I don't know what she tried to put out in the press, but it just seemed really silly that she would, because of our, where we are now, she tried to walk it back and make it seem as though I was not happy um, or I didn't ever champion for her. So I just think that's just, um, you know, that's just Marlo being her. Okay. Um, this season, it felt like, you know, I, I feel like last season you got, you all kind of we're in a better space. Am I, am I? For sure. Yeah. And toward the end, I mean, you know, she was constantly coming after me like she does. I would ignore her. And it just, every, every scenario, she just felt like her only job was to try to provoke me and say nasty things to me. Um, and uh, I think at the end, I think, you know, I was just so tired and I just said, you know, what is this about? Like, just leave, basically just leave me alone. Like whatever it is going on with you, let's just put it in the past. It's over with, I forgive you. We can, we can just wipe the slate clean and we can move on. But it just kind of really seemed as though now that she got a peach, it just made it seem like she, her only job is to come after me and have uh, fights with me. Okay. To make her relevant and to keep her, to keep her peach. So you, and you think, it, you think that's intentional. You feel like her going after you is. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's just sport for the show. Okay. She's done um, it to candy and you'll see in upcoming episodes. It's just like, it's just fake. It's just fake beef. And you know, she's even spoke, uh, spoken to that in interviews. Like, oh, I'm just keeping everybody's peach juicy. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm keeping people working and keeping paychecks coming in. But that's not what. But about not what the show is about. And that's not what being a housewife is about. You should just be interesting on your own. You don't need tricks to do it. Gotcha. Okay. I want to talk specifically about this scene when you guys really got into it. I think you were at the gym. I feel like it almost got physical. Was it something Mm -hmm. that we didn't see as viewers? Is it something we didn't hear? Can you kind of explain what happened? No, I think if you were there, it's like, you know, Marlo just goes from zero to a hundred. And, um, we were talking about candy and what, what candy said, which was, if you play it back, it was absolutely the truth just being said. And then she just goes, Oh, tell us about Mark and Mark, 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 and your booty, your Mark, your this, your that, you know, just the attacks. Like she always, you know, does the, um, unnecessary unwarranted attacks. And then she was just so angry and got, you know, right up in my face and was leaning forward and yelling and saying all kind of crazy stuff. And I'm like, no, you're not going to, you're not going to come at me crazy. Um, and be that close to me in my face. And I'm just not in that space anymore. I didn't stand up for myself with, in my marriage. And I just felt like those type of things is just not going to happen to me anymore. Okay. Gotcha. Um, on this past episode, you all got into it again. <laughs> um, and she got really upset with you one time because you said you made you made a comment about her kicking her nephews out. And then when I looked on Twitter, I felt like it was a it was split reaction in terms to what you had said, right, about the nephews. And then Candy did a speak on it interview or sit down and she was saying that Marlo had said some things about your daughter that they didn't air um on the episode is that can you provide some clarity on that did I get that mixed is that the story correct or no it, it it's um it's correct but let me just go back so you know we're gonna leave my daughter out of this because you know my daughter is not for uh 
public consumption in that way, in a negative way or derogatory way. And so we always have established on this show that children were off limits. So that's that. Um, in terms of what I actually said on the show, I was speaking about, so we all talked about, if you watch the show in the last two episodes, we all have talked about the fact that she kicked her nephews out and she shared that with us, that she kicked her nephews out. She was angry. She sent them away. Um, Candy spoke about it. Sheree spoke about it. Everyone had an opinion about it. Um, and even Candy in that moment said she felt badly because, you know, her she had a nephew that had to come and stay with her and stay with her for years or whatever. We all spoke about it. So when I spoke about it, it was a problem. Um, and so, again, you're changing the bar for me versus everyone else. So that's that. When I did share my opinion, I talked about what my issue was because I had been um, kicked out before and what it could do to children. I wasn't speaking about her, her nephews at the time. I said the one thing, which was she kicked her nephews out. Everything else I said, if you run it back, was about me, what I feel it does to children or how it could be perceived, but it had nothing to do uh, with me being very specific about her children, um, sorry, her nephews. So that's how it got back to her, which was not my issue. That's more of a Sonya issue. Okay. Um, recently, you made headlines because her home was broken into and you made it, I think you said, I think I have the, the comment, you tweeted, um, yeah, something about she didn't share, you know, she, she yeah, chose to she, share. She should have shared. You said, no. happy no one was hurt, but she took the time to withhold information from the cast that could possibly help keep us safe, but was happy to release details interviews. Hashtag fake. Can you, can you clarify what you meant by that? Or what? Yeah, so that. she had sent in a text message to all of us that it happened. So then I asked in that same thread, um, ask everyone to get on a conference call, um, schedule a conference call so that we all can talk about what happened um, or share our experiences on how to keep one another safe. I had um, a security expert that I had scheduled for the call. And so that, because it seemed as though Candy had an issue with a potential break-in and then um, Marlo and then Drew like a few weeks after that. So it seemed like it was, you know, us being targeted, if you will. Okay. So that was my thing about us being safe. So if you have some additional information that you can share, you should share it because this is a group that whether we like it or not, we're all on television together and we are the housewives, okay? So if you have had additional information, initially she said she couldn't share and then somehow she shared it with the world before she shared it with us. So that was what I was speaking to. Gotcha. Okay. What I feel like you've already expressed this on the show. What's at the core of, of your issue with Marlo? I, you know, I'm kind of done talking about that. Like, okay. I, I'd be happy to talk about anything else, but I think I'm way more interesting without talking about Marlo than talking about her. Okay. So we can talk about something else. This season, we have a few standout lines from you. I am, okay. the, I am the moment. Um, and then the next, <laughs> one, the next one is going to be about Marlo. I'm an icon and you're an ex-con. I wanted to ask whenever you say, well, hold on, whenever you say something like this, yes. you already know it's going to be <laughs> viral or iconic, or it just kind of just, you're surprised. I mean, or, you guys have seen me for years. I mean, you know, from don't come for me unless I send for you. That's just something that I said. And now every, you know, everyone talks about it twirling being gone with the wind fabulous um i didn't make up by felicia but i popularized it for you know the 2000s right um you know so then it just became viral so i'm not sure but i think when i said you know i am the moment it was because someone was saying i was trying to create a moment i'm like girl i am the moment like are you serious but then you grabbed the camera and you said i was having a I'm gross. <laughs> that was drunk Kenya that grabbed the camera. I had never saw that before. It was so funny. Thank you. No, I was just having a great time. Again, I was just in a great space, having a great time. And I was protective of my, my uh, happiness. And someone just kept trying to provoke me and trying to bring me down. And I think we all saw it for ourselves. We don't need it to be explained. 
So um, just leave me alone, child. Leave me alone. Let me have some happiness in my life. Like, get away from me already. <laughs> I get it. I understand. Um, so let's talk about projects outside of Real Housewives of Atlanta. What do we have going on? In and the other com- I know you asked about the other comment. The other comment was basically um, when I was on um, Wendy and being interviewed by uh, Michael Rappaport and someone pointed out that, you know, she had been doing so many interviews talking about I was jealous of her. And I was like, jealous? <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> but you said on the, you, but you said it on this episode, though. You said. Yes. And so that's the first. Thing. So someone, she tried to say someone fed me that line. I'm like, no, girl, I said that months and months and months ago. So it wasn't. It was just something that I said, because again, she said those words, oh, you're jealous or whatever. So I'm like, girl, who would be jealous of that, please? Yeah, I didn't know what came. I was, I was like, oh, what, what came first? Did the did yeah it okay. the uh, the show because you know we ch- taped the show maybe six months uh, prior to okay it aired yeah okay <laughs> um but projects outside of Real Housewives of Atlanta I saw an interview where you were talking about during the pandemic you had some challenges with the hair care line but now you guys are doing much better can you kind of talk about that yes Kenya more hair care (laughs) I'd love to you know it was a struggle because when we first launched we were in like 95 stores and then overnight we scaled to 2200 doors in Sally Beauty then the pandemic hit and all kinds of issues I lost employees but the orders were still coming in because I think a lot of people couldn't get to the beauty salon or hairstylist so they were doing their 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 hair at home Mm -hmm. So we still had the same volume, excuse me, the same volume of orders, if not more. And we just could not keep up with it. Like it was just really me and one other person. Sometimes it was me by myself, like scrambling to put the orders together. And then everything just started to fall apart. But I have to say that was a year ago. And now that we have had this amazing opportunity to scale once again in CVS, we started off with about four or 500 doors and now we're scaling to 1500 doors. So it's just been amazing, but it has not been easy. And I really wish that um, the show would show more of that because as an entrepreneur, you want to see the struggles, not just, oh, she's in Sally's or, oh, she's in CVS or, you know, other retailers to come. I think the learning lesson is that businesses go through struggles and if you can learn from my struggles as another fellow entrepreneur you should be able to learn um and see that so i'm hoping that they'll show a little bit more of that in the future because we got a lot of really positive responses from the viewers um liking that we they they can really see the behind the scenes and what's really going on and it's not all you know roses Glamorous, yeah. And I do feel like I don't see as much as I would like to about, you know, you in terms of like you being an entrepreneur and your yeah. business and your, and I, when I read that article, I'm like, oh, I didn't know, like, I knew you had a hair care line, but I only hear about it or see about it on social media for the most part when you're talking yeah. about it. I, yeah. I think it would be cool. And that, that is something that a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of us experienced during the pandemic, like it was a lot of people were quitting because they were getting, they were making more money. Yes. On unemployment. Yes. <laughs> so we all experienced that. Um, I want to ask you, are you still single? What, first of all, are you officially divorced? Are you officially I'm not officially divorced? No. Isn't that crazy? No. <laughs> okay. Well, are you dating? Um, I definitely have been going out on a few dates, but I have been so busy girl. I have been booked and busy. I shot another TV show that you guys will see come out. Um, you might have the exclusive on that. Okay. Um, that will it. It's not scripted, um, but I will be doing more scripted stuff. But I like to um, talk about things when they're like just about to drop. Okay. But um, yeah, I did another TV show with a great and amazing cast on another network. And it's going to be, it is, it is definitely going to blow your mind. Okay. It's going to blow your mind. <laughs> okay. I want to go back to the dating. So you have been on a few dates. You're not actively dating though. Where yeah. are you meeting these men? Are you on a dating app? No, I'm not on a dating app yet, but I don't, I wouldn't shun the opportunity to be on a dating app um but no I'm meeting them through friends like introductions or just uh it's just very weird ways that I'm meeting people but definitely I think it's more um 
more through introductions. Yeah. Okay. And is, are there any other business ventures that we did not discuss besides, um, the hair, the new TV project? Is there anything else that I missed? No, but I definitely want people to continue to support Baby Quest. I'm an ambassador for Baby Quest, and they give grants to people uh, who are suffering from uh, infertility but don't necessarily have the funding to support IVF or uh, a surrogate or anything that you can imagine that would keep someone from um, having a baby. So um, through my grant from last um, year, I was able to bring one child into the world. So I'm just really excited about that. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so I'm going to do the same grant this year. So just check on, check uh, babyquest.org out. And just donate, even if it's a dollar, five dollars, it goes a long way. Just getting one surrogate, let's say you you went through cancer and you don't, you know, you can't um, carry a baby or you have fibroids or cyst or, you know, women can go through a hundred different reasons why, you know, they may not be able to carry or even, yeah. you know, conceive. Um, a surrogate costs a hundred and thirty thousand dollars to, that's like the average costs for a surrogate. So just understand it is, it is a lot out of a lot of people's reach. Um, and I love this organization because they don't exclude anyone. They don't exclude gays or, um, you know, same sex couples or single people, older people, they don't discriminate. And I love this organization and the founder does not even take a salary. So, wow. Support Baby Quest, um, support people trying to have a family. And just, I just really, I love, I love what I'm doing with them. And I, I just hope you guys support that as well. So I had a baby 10 months ago. I have a little girl. <laughs> so I have a little girl. I was going to bring her down here. I was like, I'm, I was just trying to do too much. But so I have a little girl. She's, her name is Rain. You look amazing. Thank you. But listen, so I, um, we try for a few years. I'm over 35. So, you know, when you're over 35, yep. you the, the, it goes down after 36, the chart. Yeah. Yeah. So we did a, we did an IUI first and then we, um, I was like, well, I don't want to have a baby right now. So let me just freeze my eggs. And yep. so I think out of pocket, I end up spending maybe about nine or $10,000 because my insurance, you know, I'm self-employed. My insurance didn't cover freezing your eggs but then I act then I accidentally got pregnant but I had all this medication yes the medication is very the medication itself is like five grand yeah so I had all this medication for one round of IVF that that's the medication but I had medication for to freeze my eggs because you have to you have shots and stuff like that it's basically the same it's the same because you're stimulating the uh the growth and the follicles to grow Okay, but that, so anyway, I, I should have donated all that because I, I ended up just accidentally getting pregnant. But that kind of. Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> I know, I, it, I, but it opened my eyes to this different kind of journey of how pricey it is. And, and you know, when I would go to the um, fertility clinic, it was like no black. My doctor was black, but it was like no black women. It yeah. Was, you know, um, and because it's expen- it's super expensive. So when I was in my 30s, when I lived in LA, I went to a clinic. We, there was this, because um, I knew I had fibroids, but I wasn't actively trying to have children. And a girlfriend of mine who was about, who is about five years, five to six years older than me, she had already had children. And it was this very prestigious um, clinic uh, in California and they were having like these seminars to, to basically educate women on infertility. And it scared me to death. And so I was like, how much is it? Yes, I want to freeze my eggs. So me and my girlfriend did it in California. And that was so many years ago. Wow. And I'm so glad that I did because, you know, it's scary when you get older, you just don't know what's going to happen. And, and I, I just recommend that anyone... Um, and you know, they have payment plans now. I'm sure the costs are much lower now yeah. uh, than they, than it was back then. I think back then it was about 10 grand. Yeah. And I think that now it's probably easily five or six, you know, yeah. I know, was, it, I, I know I was, the medication was, is what was really, you know. Yeah. And I think I ordered my medication when I did my IVF rounds, I ended up ordering my, my medication, um, like through, through the mail you can order uh Europe or something yeah or yeah online something but it saved me a lot of money so yeah. Yeah. yeah people need to know man you know hopefully through baby quest we can do more of those kind of seminars and 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 maybe 
do more to educate women before it's too late you know yeah. I would love to um, do, you should hit me offline because I would love to do something for us to do okay. something together with them because I I you know yes I kind of I would love so it. too they need help they're they're small but they you know they need help yeah and um, I'm here for it because I just I love everything that they're doing and you know for the girls who are successful, we need to look out for the girls who are still, you know, the, the people I should say that are still trying because yeah. sometimes it's the sa- a same sex couple and they need a surrogate, they need a donor, they need, you know, whatever it is that they need. So I'm, I'm here for it. And I, I love everything that they're doing. It makes me, it just makes me feel like this is the right thing that I'm doing in my life. And yeah. I just want to continue to do it. Forget about the TV stuff. Yeah. But if I can bring awareness to causes like that to help families achieve you know be actually being a family and and giving um and having children then I, I just want to continue to work with them okay well yeah. this is a great conversation I, yes, I'll get you offline I'll make sure we have each other's contact yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you for my personal because I'm not in the the <laughs> It's too much going on in the business world. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so I agree. I'll hit you on my personal one. Uh, did we cover everything? Because I know you have a, a short window. I know I need to get. Need yes. To I, um, that's all I can think about for right now. Yes. Okay. And just, yeah. Can you more hair care in CVS? Go get some more hair. If you want more hair, then get it. <laughs> and uh, just thank you for watching Real Housewives. We're on every Sunday at 8 p.m. Uh, and it's just getting juicier. So. All right. Well, thank you, Kenya. And yeah, I'll hit you, you um, on the DM. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, take care. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.